Hey guys, Martin here. We're still here, uh, the middle of January uh, 2017. I like to say when this is going out uh, because uh, it gives me a good frame of reference for whereabouts on my journey through the land of depression I am. And uh, and it is a journey. I, I, I know I'm laughing and I know, you know, it sounds probably a little bit silly, but uh, it is a journey. And uh, in fact, that aspect of it is what I wanted to discuss this time because I, uh, I'm on the up and up. I don't think that's the right use of that phrase. Uh, I'm recovering, and that's kind of what this episode is about. This this installment because uh, I think I've been a little reluctant to talk about that. I I feel like that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing that I don't want to talk about the fact that I'm doing better. Uh, and the reason I'm hesitant to talk about it is because. I almost feel like it's almost, it'll feel to some people like I'm rubbing it in or that, you know, and some people might think it's disingenuous to even have a series about depression if I am uh, recovering. And I don't think I'm fully recovered at all. I'm definitely still um, feeling the effects of depression. Uh, I'm not necessarily mm, depressed right now in this very moment, but I'm I'm still... I'm going through some things, you know, and and those things uh, are still part of the experience. And uh, even when you're recovering from it, even when I'm recovering from it, I should say, I, I still feel affected by what I went through and what I'm still going through. So I wanted to talk about how recovery feels, at least in this, at uh, this point in the timeline, you know, uh, my good friend, Takahata 101, he uh, on Twitter referred to uh, what I was doing with We're Still Here and just being open about having depression. Uh, he referred to it as sort of charting the, this dark territory that not many people uh, are willing to explore openly and, and talk about. Uh, and doing so allows other people to not necessarily have, you know, a, a solution or a way out, but it gives them a map of this strange, very, um, very dark place that a lot of people find themselves in. It's like, I've likened it to an ocean. I've likened it to sort of uh, being adrift uh, on a piece of uh, driftwood, adrift on driftwood, and uh, sort of, and it being night. And uh, it's it's like, you can't see land in any direction. And it, it feels almost like being out in outer space, but you definitely feel grounded and you feel like you could sink at any time. Uh, I've had some people refer to it as like going through the woods and uh, not being able to see any signs of civilization. And it, it, it is a very similar sensation. You feel lost and alone. And uh, recovering from it is, it's part of that map, you know, you know, going through that strange territory that you, it's unfamiliar and it's it's dangerous at times and it's frightening and it's very lonely but recovery uh i wouldn't say necessarily escaping from it but making progress to leaving making progress towards the exit i suppose is where i'm at right now and that's it's still an important part of it and how it feels to me is like you know, I, like I said, I'm I'm not fully recovered. I'm still definitely recovering. I'm in the process of doing so, and so how it feels right now is I I almost feel like I've had a roommate. You know, I've I, uh, depression has been my roommate for a long time. And uh, say for example, depression all my life is an apartment, and depression was my roommate. Like I said, and. I never would leave the apartment. The apartment was a safe place. It was a very lonely place, and you know, it uh, it was, but it was comfortable. You know, depression was very comfortable uh, at times. Uh, being alone was a comfort. Uh, be it's a familiar sensation, and after a while, uh, even something awful, if it's familiar, it's easy to cling to and rely on. And uh, that's how I felt with depression. Was it's like it felt like. A home point, you know, that's why I liken it to an apartment. And the voice that I would hear in the back of my head whenever I would feel discouraged or like down on myself or want to kill myself, that's like my roommate basically egging me on and being like, look, you have no reason to be here. Nobody wants you here. Why not just leave? 
you know, in so many words. And uh, I would I would never leave this apartment. You know, there were times when I would stay in this apartment for like weeks, months on end, and I would refuse to see what the outside world looked like because that was reality. You know, that's what that's what that was. You know, the apartment that the apartment with four walls around me was the comfort of depression. And if I were to venture outside of that, I would be confronted with something I couldn't necessarily handle. And having started my recovery, having been on the road to recovery for a long time now, and definitely being at a point where I can say that I'm doing better, I almost feel like that roommate hasn't been around for a while, if that makes sense. Though the, the, the apartment is still here, I'm still seeing those same four walls and I'm not being when I say apartment I'm not being literal whatsoever it's not my actual apartment I'm, I don't even live in an apartment anymore but I used to and that's why I liken it to that because it's just a familiar feeling but depression gradually fading feels like that voice I haven't heard that voice in a long time um, th those specific things that depression would tell me I still feel a bit insecure and I still feel down on myself from time to time but the really strong feeling of being worthless and wanting to die, that voice has faded. And it's it's like my roommate has moved out. Uh, but as a result, he sort of left all his stuff behind, if you know what I mean. He sort of left all... Uh, you can see all the trappings of having them around. You know, maybe, maybe one part of the apartment was theirs and it's a bit messy still, you know. And, and that's kind of how my life is right now. I... I'm forced now to face the idea that I have to go outside and face reality on my own, but I still, when I return to that apartment, I can still see what it was like, but I'm seeing it through different eyes. I'm seeing it through my own eyes because before my roommate, the depression voice, uh, would tell me what my reality was because I wouldn't look at the actual outside world I'd, I'd just hear about it from them. You know, it would be like, well, you don't want to go out there because everyone hates you. And you don't want to go out there because you'll fail and you'll and you'll screw everything up and you, you'll basically, you'll come back here and you'll just everything will be the same. You'll be just as worthless. And that voice is gone, but he's left all his trappings behind. It's like seeing the ocean that I talked about earlier. It's because I, I definitely feel like I've been adrift for a long time and even though I've had the potential to control my actions and control my thoughts, the potential to do so, I haven't. And uh, that's been me allowing the tide to take me where it will go. And, and who knows if it'll take me over the edge of the world or if it'll take me to dry land. I had no idea. I just didn't, I didn't want to think about it. But it's like, instead of being in the ocean at night, the sun has slowly started to rise, you know, on the horizon and being able to see the ocean around me and see what's in the distance. And while that's not necessarily put me in a better predicament, it's made me more aware of where I am and where I came from and how to move to the next point, if that makes any sense. I hope what I'm saying makes a lot of sense. I hope it makes any sense because it sounds like I'm just sort of waxing poetic, but this is, this is the context that I put it in to understand it for myself, you know? Uh, but it's like, it's like seeing, uh, this dark place that I've existed in for a long time with the lights switched on suddenly. And it's the same place. It's the same scary sort of quiet, lonely place, but I can see again. And I, I, and maybe there are other people here with me and that's kind of what you guys are. And it's obviously what my wife is and my family is and my friends are. And it's really it's really just important to me to remember this moment. It's important to me to be able to, because here's why I was reluctant to talk about it because I felt like, you know, I'm doing a series about depression, but I'm talking about getting better and like, how does that help people? But it helps, it helps me certainly. And I hope that it helps some of you because it can be difficult to understand when you are recovering and it can be difficult to, to know and appreciate the steps that you've taken, even if it's indirect, even if it's something that you haven't specifically done, if something just changed in your life that, that gave you the clarity that you needed to understand contextually where you are and where you've been and where you're going to from here, this point where maybe you've not been rescued and maybe you've not healed completely, but you have that ability. You feel like 
this is somewhere where you have options suddenly. You don't have to just give up and lose. And and I didn't want I didn't necessarily know if I wanted to believe that I was doing okay. I know I've been saying over and over in the last like I think several entries that, you know, oh I'm I'm doing much better. But that's kind of been me trying to sort of just repeat that to myself so I would believe it. But this is me believing it. And I kind of think that's what this series is, is me being able to understand and put into context and see the improvement that I've made. And even when things get worse, it's important to see that. And right now, where I'm at, there's suddenly a light on and I can see for the first time in a long time that I'm not hopeless, that I'm, that I matter. And I really hope, I hope that's something you get to experience. I really do. Because it's a really lonely place to be. And, and even if, because one of the points of this series was to help you understand that you're not going through this alone. But even if you know that you're not going through it alone, it does help. But in a way it hurts, because it's like, you're not alone in this awful thing. But I, I want you to know that where I am at right now, I believe that you can get there and I won't have to be alone in recovery and you won't have to think about it anymore. You'll be able to actually exist in that moment. I sound really, I, I, I sound really pretentious right now, but this all makes sense to me. I, I wish I was better at describing a lot of this stuff. I wish I was better at because I'm not really the kind of person who just talks or ad-libs. I don't, I'm not very good at conversation. I'm not very good at talking to people about myself. I don't really want to. I'm not really inclined to do that. So if you ever, oh, it's got, gotten dark, hasn't it? I just looked at the screen. Uh, if you ever, if you ever notice that I'm struggling to explain myself or even conjure the words, <laughs> you know, if I'm, if I'm ever struggling to form a coherent sentence, then that's why I just don't, I don't feel like I'm worth talking about sometimes and I don't feel I don't feel that people want to hear what I have to say but I feel people should hear what I have to say in this instance and I hope that you've heard something that made any sense or you know helped put things into perspective because this is helping me uh, I just wanted to say that I just wanted to say that's what I feel right now I feel I feel really alive I feel really alive. And that's that's me for today. And I, I really hope that you're doing well. I uh, I apologize if if this finds you in a, ba a bad time. But eventually it'll find I'll find you in a good place. I'll find you in a good time. And I'll still be talking to you. And we'll both be there together. All right. I'll talk to you later, all right?